Hello, peace fiends. My name is Bora, and I am a energy reader, multi-dimensional channel, and the peace healer has agreed to help me spread my work a little bit. Calling me a peace fiend because you know the peace dealer, peace fiend. I think that's pretty funny. But if you don't find it funny, I'm so sorry. I have a weird sense of humor. So here I'm going to read your energy, but centering around your rising sign because in esoteric astrology, your ascendant slash your rising sign is your gateway towards ascension. And following the higher traits of each of your ascendant signs is going to really balance out your whatever other complex you have going on as a human. So in attempt to kind of help you highlight those qualities and have you focus a little bit more on your ascendant than your sun sign or your moon sign as you might usually do uh, that is my desire so looking at energy and looking at your complex which is the astrological sign and without this body of astrology we wouldn't have this experience of time right because they're the ones that kind of fragment this timeless continuum into having with their electromagnetic fields I'm kind of warping that timelessness into this structure so it definitely is valid and people who don't understand the val validity of these planetary bodies I, I don't know i feel bad for them hey earth rising thank you so much for tuning in i'm going to be reading the october energy for people who have an ascendant sign in earth so that would be virgo capricorn and taurus um, and remember that this is for your rising sign and if you're drawn to watch this even if that's not your rising sign by all means but this is intended to focus on your ascendant because in esoteric astrology um, attaining the higher qualities of your ascendant sign is your gateway to proper ascension so let's see what um, the cards have in store for you this month and I just want to highlight that actually one of the strongest messages that are getting downloaded before your card spread even comes is there's going to be times throughout the month and onwards that there's going to seem to be a lot of little disturbances that are not really disturbances that, but you need to view them as things that are really helping you focus on the right priorities. So as your density gets lighter and lighter and you become more of a crystalline being of light rather than a carbon-based human, you have to start getting comfortable with this idea that your mental body is probably going to be more ethereal, you're going to be getting constant downloads, you're going to be receiving a lot of guidances from you know the universal flow and you learn to dismiss them as soon as they come and you know let it take shape when it's time so the one of the ways in which you can really hone in on when is the right time to take action on a specific goal is synchronicities and sometimes synchronicities are going to happen in a way that I, I guess you could call that negative synchronicity when something isn't working out right and something is being distracting other, other things are being distracting or you find that whatever you're working on currently isn't going as smoothly as you want then it's a chance for you to recalibrate what is my main priority right now because it seems that whatever I'm trying to do isn't working out so well or just recalibrating the way it wor works Um, I also see that for a lot of you guys who are tuning in, your clear audience capacities are really increasing and what that means is you're going to get extra sensitive to noise and this purging of your clear audience abilities, you know, as your pineal gland becomes more decalcified and you're building up, like I said, this crystalline body that is going to be more prominent in your upcoming years than your carbon-based body. Um, the way you navigate through reality is going to be more based on this um, I guess if, if you want to look at it from a biochemical perspective it's silica and um, the pineal gland as it decalcifies this third eye vision doesn't just manifest as a ethereal vision but it also manifests as ethereal sound ethereal sensations you know this subtler frequencies of 
sensory perception. And what's happening is because you're purging out this clear audience capacity and it's increasing and getting more intensified, um, you're probably going to have a lot of perjury in terms of sound. So you might just find yourself not even liking the usual music that you like or just distractions coming from sounds, noises, and um, yeah. So when that happens, just try to understand where that's coming from and cultivate the patience that's needed. My other message for the earth signs rising are to cultivate this compassion and patience because I think that's what you need the most right now is this patience. Um, because obviously you're getting distracted there's a lot of distractions and it seems like you're learning to work with these negative synchronicities that are essentially helping you focus on the positive synchronicities so when people get really excited about synchronicities right um it's almost like you know when you're driving it unless you have your foot on the brake pedal the car is accelerating right that's basically like what's happening and try to understand that in this new dimension your reality is going to operate in a way that synchronicities are natural so unless you have this brake pedal um on the on your foot your life is going to constantly unfold as synchronicity so that's why a lot of my clients when they ask me about oh i'm getting all these numbers what does that mean i'm like it doesn't really mean anything much more than what you give it so, so unless the meaning is absolutely clear for you at the moment it's just a natural byproduct of your frequency um, and so that's what i also want to mention and on the other hand this negative synchronicity right that's when you know these distractions are happening these um obstacles and challenges keep coming up you just then start focusing on what's the real synchronicity that's happening what's the thing that I need to adjust or this energetic body that I have to recalibrate in order to get on the right track so um, if you're gonna go down this path of constant synchronicities versus negative synchronicities you have to cultivate this kind of tolerance and patience towards negative synchronicities because without those how are you going to hone in on the precise angle to which you're going to navigate through this dimension? Dimensional interface. It's really not even just a single dimension. It's, um, I, I know you're constantly weaving in and out of you know, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and up. And most likely, your resting position is now fourth rather than third. That's what I'm saying. This astral body and the etheric body are more prominent in the way you really experience life so that also means that you need to get more grounded in your perception when you're experiencing these higher dimensional um, energies higher dimensional perception I think that's the thing too is you have to get really used to the fact that your paths are going to be very unknown like it's going to seem unknown like this card paths unknown when you're navigating through these um, realities and you're navigating through these synchronicities it's not going to make logical sense it's not going to make linear cognitive sense so that's another thing that you have to be wary of when you're trying to label situations and trying to label the people involved in the situation understand that at every moment depending on your perspective you're actually shifting a little portion of their reality so let's say that you're in a fight with a friend and you think oh this person is this and that and you start labeling the, their character what you're actually doing is co-creating a little fractal in their consciousness that constantly is sh shifting d due to your perception and this is non-stop and it doesn't mean that you actually change the entire person but you're definitely shifting a holographic aspect of that person a portion of that person that is a piece of your psyche because essentially you're a part of their psyche and they're a part of your psyche you, you guys are just levels to each other's psyche and the relationship of that obviously it's not as linear and cognitive as your brain might like to structure it 
Um, but that's why there's paths unknown is your main central energy for this month. Um, another thing here is that you, there's going to be times when you're going to need to do something a few times over and over again, and it's going to feel like you're wasting your energy. So let's say that you've tried to manifest something over and over again, and at this point, it's like a few times that you had to do it. And if you're thinking like that you had been wasting your energy in the other previous times, you have to understand that each time that you've tried it, the energy hadn't been wasted, but you've learned a new set of codes or you've learned a new set of perspectives every time you've been trying it. So there's a huge value in that and you'll start to see that unfold um, when the final thing kind of manifests because you have this also... <laughs> have this strong 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 desire right now my friends it's funny because these cards the the way they came up in the sequence right um there's this path that are unknown to you that you're just learning to intuitively navigate through with your intuition but there's this other part of you this up in the air card is talking about how you have this burning desire to see how it's gonna all unfold so you do have a knowing that something's going to work out in a certain way and it has to do also with this manifestation of the two separate worlds that you've been living so you had an energized parallel reality that you've been kind of creating that you've been brewing in your subconscious mind and really putting in all of your efforts and manifestation energy towards this one parallel timeline and we've also been living in a, another timeline that was more grounded in a way that was conditioned towards the previous i guess earth grid and right now is a moment where you're being initiated into merging the two together. And so while you're merging it together, you have this really, really deep desire to first of all get confirmation that that's what's happening, that you're merging the two. Well, here's a confirmation for you from me, if you've been looking for one, but it is merging. this timeline hadn't gone to waste it hadn't disappeared it just been solidifying in the other other probable reality so like i said before you it's it's almost like if somebody were teaching you how to manifest reality or something like that and they teach you how to build upon your current reality to change it to another reality but what you've been doing is actually a much more advanced way of quantum jumping between holding another entire reality on a different probable timeline and while that crystallized on its own you wanted to bridge it to this current one and have this exponential leap towards it that's what you want to experience and it's not anything less than people who learn to just linearly build upon their current reality but you'll see how this unfolds and you really want to know how it unfolds you're so curious but um that's the thing you you, you shouldn't need to know because the consciousness that you're actually starting to embody in this new reality is non-cognitive. So how will you try to understand a reality that's non-cognitive, that's not linear? And now you've actually reached this point, this ascent. You've reached the point where this is actually like you just reached the top of the mountain, which is a symbol for that peak where it actually happens. This is the accomplishment. And this initiation actually, if you're not too familiar with initiations, they're basically like the most profound kind of portals to the spiritual journey where you're being tested. It's like this final hallmark 
leap that you have to take um, after you work on a certain spiritual path. And if you fail this, it's not a good thing, but you're not going to fail it. <laughs> because what you're being tested for, if you can just understand at the same level that the outcome is assured, right? What you need to learn to cultivate is that patience and this faith in your higher self that this is what's happening you're merging with it so you just have to have the faith that this is what's actually occurring if that really makes sense to you i hope it does i'm trying but it's hard to put words to a non-linear non-cognitive energy The last set of cards that I have here has to do with the moon cycle and this timing of the moon cycle. So in October, pay very careful attention to the moon and that is a big clue in the actions that you're going to take. And actually, instead of even intending to align with the moon in a way that oh when there's a new moon i'm going to set a new intention and when there's a full moon i'm going to release some things that don't serve me anymore instead of doing that try to gauge how in tune you are when you're strictly following your intuition in what you want to do and take note of how that aligns with the moon because most likely it's already aligned you don't have to necessarily um you don't have to necessarily consciously try to align with the moon you already are aligned and i think that's going to give you some confidence in understanding that um this is going to play out for all the other planetary bodies and not just the moon so you have to just trust that all these different pools from your intuition and all these different thoughts that you have all these different emotions each come from this greater body of mind um, the, the various different aspects of your mind which also the planets like I talked about humans how each other is a reflection of a certain level of their psyche so are the planetary bodies the Mars is a certain aspect of your psyche the Sun is a certain aspect of your psyche the moon is a certain aspect of your psyche Pluto Jupiter like all of them are just different aspects of your psyche so when you can really trust that each part of you is aligned to a greater force of nature and intelligence um, you'll be more balanced in the way you approach through reading the different collective consciousness that is your mind that is your mind okay For a lot of people who are tuned into this, you're having a very profound initiation, like I said, and emerging with your higher self to a next intimate degree. So I, you, I often talk about how your real higher self and your two twin flame is nothing but your higher self, your higher self. And whatever relationship manifests on the physical level is actually just a reflection of the internal alignment that you have with your higher self. So if you have a positive relationship with your higher self and if your partner has a positive relationship with their um, higher self, then you're going to have a very fulfilling relationship that you might mistake as, oh, this is my physical twin flame, but it's really just a reflection of that vertical alignment, right? And what, what's happening here is that like you're merging you're initiating this new embodiment of a new level of your higher self in your physical reality um it's going to result in uh some sort of a really positive relationship with external people especially romantic partner um but i see that there's previous kind of trauma around this because you it, it, it's, it's coming down to this matter of self-worth and self-confidence, right? And this is something that you really are going to be challenged with 
but you have to just be really conscious when this energy comes up and realize that when it comes to this matter of self-worth and self-confidence it's because you're aligned and tuned into a, a lower state of mind there's a state and level of your mind that is free of all conflict and so no matter what area of life it's regarding there's a level of your mind that you can actually attune your frequency to that doesn't view it as such that doesn't view it as a challenge you can instead of this mountain right if this seems like an obstacle to you instead of going around it or going over it there's other options available like transcending it or going through it so you can't view all of these things as challenges anymore because this obstacle card by itself in itself this notion of obstacles and challenges and this notion of needing to accomplish something is only coming to you when your brain waves are at a beta frequency so if you know the brainwave states there's beta there's alpha which is like the state that you get into when you're daydreaming there's level of theta which is where you can impact your the the reality that you experience as a subjective human um, so when you can tap into a higher state of the brain you'll actually cease to have all these problems that you were experiencing because you're transcending them so you have to make a choice every time especially when it comes to this self-worth and try to examine what is so tied to your self-worth what triggers your self-worth problems a lot of the times it's with regarding a relationship when you feel insecure when you feel possessive or when you feel the need to control an outcome of a relationship or control their actions when the love is conditional like if you need them to change or if you um, vice versa if you're willing to change so much for the other person if you feel like you have to become something else for the other person these are all subtle little tweaks that you have to adjust in your self-perception and when it comes to your self-perception merging it with the higher self um, and then this will always result in your soul's evolution which i want to highlight the purpose of any relationship is never ever to get anywhere do not label another person as your soulmate or a twin flame because all they are is a energetic package for you to to make your next leap and whether that person ends up becoming your lifelong partner or not is very much secondary to what you get out of it in terms of self-inquiry um so just look at them as a tool for self-evolution that would be great and i don't mean them to be looked at as a tool as like an object you know what i mean an energetic gateway for you to evolve and for you to help them evolve because you're essentially doing the same thing and whether that person can do the same with you um, that's up to their free will but at least you can learn from them so i hope that this reading has been helpful thank you so much for tuning in if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up or comment so that will know if i should keep posting on this channel because obviously this is my first time meeting you guys and i need to see if you guys vibe with my message so that would be mean a lot if you can leave feedback or some kind of reaction so sending you lots of love and blessings to you